to welcome Professor of Law at the Thomas Jefferson School of Law in San Diego, California, and former president of the National Lawyers Guild, author of Cowboy Republic, Six Ways the Bush Gang Has Defied the Law and Rules of Disengagement, The Politics and Honor of Military Dissent. I'd like to welcome Marjorie Cohen to the soapbox. It's a delight to be here with all of you today. In October of 1969, Daniel Ellsberg smuggled out of his office and made public a 7,000-page top-secret study of decision-making during the Vietnam War. It became known as the Pentagon Papers. Dan risked his future knowing that he would likely spend his life in prison for his expose. The re release of the Pentagon Papers ultimately helped to end not only the Nixon presidency, but also the Vietnam War, in which 58,000 Americans and 3 million Indo-Chinese were killed. Dan's courageous act was essential to holding accountable our leaders who had betrayed American values by starting and perpetuating an illegal and deadly war. Private First Class Bradley Manning's alleged crimes follow in this tradition. The July 2007 video he is accused of leaking to WikiLeaks has been viewed by millions of people on the internet. It is called collateral murder. It depicts U.S. military Apache helicopter soldiers from Bravo Company 216 killing 12 civilians and wounding two children in Iraq. The dead included two employees of the Reuters news agency. The video shows U.S. forces watching as a van pulls up to evacuate the wounded. They again open fire from the helicopter, killing more people. During the radio chatter between the helicopter crew members and their supervisors, one crew member gloated after the first <laughs> shooting, saying, oh yeah, look at those dead bastards. One Iraqi witness told Amy Goodman, the helicopter came yesterday from there and hovered around. Then it came right here where a group of people were standing. They didn't have any weapons or arms of any sort. This area doesn't have arms insurgents. They destroyed the place and shot at people and they didn't let anyone help the wounded. Another witness said, they killed all the wounded and drew, drove over their bodies. Everyone witnessed it, and the journalist was among those who was injured, and the armored vehicle drove over his body. Journalist Rick Rowley reported that the man who they drove over was alive. He had crawled out of the van that had been shot, and he was still alive when the American tank drove over him and cut him in half. Commanders decided that the wounded child was not to be taken to a U.S. military field hospital. Ethan McCord, one of the soldiers on the scene who picked up the child and tried to take him to a military vehicle, was reprimanded for his response. The U.S. Central Command The U.S. Central Command exonerated the soldiers and refused to reopen the investigation. Reporters Without Borders said, if this young soldier had not leaked the video, we would have no evidence of what was clearly a serious abuse on the part of the U.S. military. And he really should have said war crime. Article 46 of the Geneva Conventions contained the basic rule on the protection of civilians during wartime. It reads, in order to ensure respect 
for and protection of the civilian population and civilian objects, the parties to the conflict shall at all times distinguish between the civilian population and combatants and between civilian objects and military objectives and accordingly shall direct their operations only against military objectives. The actions depicted in collateral murder contain evidence of three violations of the Geneva Conventions, which amount to war crimes. There were civilians standing around. There was no one firing at the U.S. soldiers and at least two people with cameras. They may, they, there may have been people armed, like there are many people armed in the U.S., but this does not create the license to fire on people. That's one violation of the Geneva Conventions, targeting people who are not a military necessity who do not pose a threat. The second and third possible violation of the Geneva Conventions or the laws of war are evident in the scene on the tape when the van attempts to rescue the wounded and, la and, and a later scene of a U.S. tank rolling over a body on the ground. The soldiers shot him and those in the van, another possible violation of the Geneva Conventions preventing the rescuers. Third, when the wounded or dead man was lying on the ground and a U.S. tank rolled over him, effectively splitting him in two, and if he was dead, that was re disrespecting a body, still another violation of the Geneva Conventions. Josh Stiber, a former U.S. Army specialist and a member of the Bravo Company 216, was not with his company when they killed the civilians depicted in collateral murder. Stiber told Truthout that such acts were not isolated incidents and were common during his tour of duty. After watching the video, I would definitely say, he said, that this is nine times out of ten the way things ended up. Stiber explained that during his basic training for the military, we watched videos celebrating death, and he said that his leaders would pull aside soldiers who'd not deployed and ask us if somebody opened fire on us in a market full of unarmed civilians, would we return fire? And if you didn't say yes instantly, you got yelled at for not being a good soldier. The mindset of military training, he said, was one based on fear and the ability to eliminate any threat. Bradley Manning is also being investigated for allegedly leaking the Afghan war diary documents that were also posted on WikiLeaks in coordination with the New York Times, the UK Guardian, and the German magazine Der Spiegel. But President Obama said, quote, the fact is these documents don't reveal any issues that haven't already informed our public debate on Afghanistan, unquote. Those reports expose 20,000 deaths, including thousands of children, according to WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. Many of these also likely contain evidence of war crimes. Besides the fact that targeting civilians is illegal, it also makes us less safe. A new study by the National Bureau of Economic Research, which was released by the New America Foundation, concluded that civilian attacks in Afghanistan make our troops less safe due to retaliation. A typical incident that caused two Afghan civilian deaths provoked six revenge attacks by the Taliban and other fighters. Moreover, Marine, I've got it now. It's heavy. Moreover, Marine Colonel David Lapan, a senior Pentagon spokesman, said that so far there is no evidence that the Taliban has harmed any Afghan civilians as a result of the release of the 76,000 logs this past summer. More than 1,000 Americans and untold numbers of Afghans have been killed in this war, which is just as illegal, expensive, and counterproductive as the one in Iraq. The charges against Bradley Manning end with the language, and I quote, such conduct being prejudicial to good order and discipline in the armed forces and being of a nature to bring discredit upon the armed forces, unquote. On the contrary, if Manning did what he is expect, suspected of doing, he should be honored as an American war hero for exposing war crimes and hopefully, ultimately, helping to end this war. Thank you.